Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 30. Boy, that was a good age, man. That was a long time ago. Ah, sorry, I drifted off there. Thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Kenneth Bocor. I'm the creator and host and your guy that you'll be listening to for the next 20 minutes or 30 minutes or so as I've got an action-packed show regarding cars. We're just going to talk about battery electric vehicles today and what's going on in that marketplace. So let me first start off with an update to the Nissan Leaf a battery management system update that they've come out with. Now, it's only available in Europe and uh, in the UK. It's not available in Japan and North America. And that's another uh, conversation that I'm trying to have with Nissan. I'm trying to find and navigate my way to the right people. And I am making some headway. I will continue to talk to Nissan about getting them to change their minds to offer this latest update of the uh, 2018 uh, LEAF battery management software for those uh, affected owners. And I'll continue to talk to them until I can get it changed because I think they should do the right thing and offer it to owners who want it. It's not a safety issue. It's not a recall or anything like that. It doesn't impact anything to do with uh, the safetiness or the worthiness of the vehicle. But for those owners that want to do more than a couple of rapids a day, that want to do some longer trips, this BMS update will make it easier. Now, on that note, uh, Bjorn and a couple of other folks have come out with some videos uh, testing this new version of the BMS software, or version C. And as you can see by the chart behind me, this uh, I watched uh, Bjorn, and thank you, Bjorn, for doing that. I watched his video, and then uh, Green Tea Leaf James had done a quick run on it as well, and Aaron Russell as well in the UK. But the chart behind me talks about, uh, or at least it's the findings that I picked out from more beyond's video because he didn't really kind of put a summary together. I just as I went along as he went along with it, I wrote down numbers. And as you can see, uh, by my calculations, he did quite a number of rapids in this. Uh, this was the race against the eagle video that just came up a few days ago. So you can see the leaf spy battery temperature degrees there. The leaf spy pro state of charge. I don't don't go by the gom. I went by leaf spy pro when he showed that. And then the kilowatt. DC fast charging speeds that Bjorn experience. And if you look at all that, the average there is pretty good. It's uh, somewhere around the 35 or 36 or so kilowatt um, charging speed, which is much better than it was for the A version of the BMS update. It would, you could get down as low as 16, 18 with reports after you know three or four multiple rapid charges in a single time period. And again, uh, for people who are not aware of this, this is this is if you're driving the leaf and you're stopping and you're deep, fast charging to 80 or 90 percent, usually 80 because it's it tapers and it takes so long to get from 80 to 100. It's technically it's usually time consuming to do that. And that's for all uh, battery electric vehicles. Then you drive to gets down to 20 or so, then you charge back up to 80 and you rinse and repeat. And this is basically what Bjorn tried to do in in his route in his uh, 500 or so uh, mile. Uh, I think it was actually 600 kilometers, almost 600 kilometer run that he did. So anyway, that's the, the specs. And this is in, in winter temperatures with an outside tempo of about minus three. He did a lot of hills and a lot of snow areas, some precip coming down uh, around 90 to 100 K as far as the speed kilometers per hour for speed. So long and short of it is the version C update seems to have made a big difference for those folks who want to be able to take their leaf on longer trips. So thank you, Bjorn, for doing that. And I will continue, as I mentioned, to have the dialogue with Nissan to try to see if I can get them to change their mind about releasing this update to North America and Japanese owners. Um, I know in North America, the numbers aren't going to be super high because, again, it was only for vehicles that were um, uh, that were uh, pr produced during a certain time period. So anyway, it's all out there. So I will continue to have that dialogue and see what I can do to change it. But it's good news on the battery management system for the LEAF. It seems to be more in line with kind of a uh, what you would experience for DC fast charging. So staying with Nissan, Nissan has decided to cancel the diesel version of their really popular NV200 van. Uh, it's a van that can be both a passenger flavor and a cargo flavor configurations. It's very popular in the UK and in Europe, especially the electric version of it, the ENV200. And what Nissan has done is decided to just start building and start delivering the 
electric version of this, the ENV200. So they're, uh, by the end of the summer or around summer of this year, Nissan's going to discontinue the diesel version on that van and only produce the ENV200. Um, right now, I believe it just has the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, there's no mention about it incorporating the E Plus's 62 kilowatt hour battery system or pack. So we'll have to wait and see what, what happens there. Uh, and also, Nissan, together with Renault, about midsummer of this year in, as well, will launch another new model called the NV250. And that'll be produced in Marberge, France, which will be assembling to the Renault Kangoo. Now, the Kangoo is available in an electric version. It's called the Kangoo ZE or ZE. And, um, and this NV250 van, which is supposed to replace that, is going to be expected to be an EV as well. So it's nice to see Nissan starting to drop some of their petrol lineup in favor of, of electrification. The, the ENV200 has pretty good specs. It has a um, range of about 125 miles. Now that's WLTP, so let's say 100 miles EPA whatever that 160 or so kilometers um, it can do uh, and it's basically more urbanish design it's got the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack as I mentioned with an 80 kilowatt electric motor and a 6.6 .6 onboard charger and can payload can either have up to 705 kilos kilograms of payload or seat seven people so it comes in a passenger type version as well so Again, great on Nissan. It's nice to see manufacturers look to their more commercially available vehicles and use vehicles and look at adopting them for electrification. Talked a lot about the Kia Niro over the last few weeks. And the only thing I'm going to bring up, as you guys know, it's my car of the year and I'm sticking to it. Uh, there was an article came out though, and I kind of think we were expecting this because one of the things I was saying is I really hope Kia can build enough. Well, it looks like they are having some issues from a delivery perspective and managing to get uh, orders fulfilled. Um, again, it's a surprise. It's not really that much of a surprise. I know that Kia is still trying to ramp up their electrification production because they really only had the Soul for the last few years. And the e Nero is taking off all the reviews that I've seen, my own uh, 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 thought viewpoints on it, <clears throat> all very positive on this vehicle. So it's selling like proverbial hotcakes out there in the EV marketplace. The UK, for example, has uh, ordered, had pretty well cleaned out the initial batch of 900 that was ordered in, within several weeks of the or, uh, opening uh, order being opened. And it looks like the deliveries, though, for those vehicles won't happen to the latter part of this year. And then there'll be another batch released later on this year, but won't have, which won't see deliveries until into early or uh, probably the first quarter of 2020 as Kia continues to ramp up production of the uh, Nero EV. Um, so it looks like that restraining or constraining factor is going to remain at least for the next year to year and a half so into halfway point of 2020 by the looks of it now there 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 it's a couple of things the good problem is it's very popular so they're getting a lot of orders and a lot of demand for it hmm that sounds like the tesla 3 but anyway i digress also, um, as far as trying to ramp up production, it's taking them time to be able to do that. And there's also uh, still some supply change management when it comes to the battery packs for the Kia Niro, uh, Niro EV. So depending on which country you're in, it does come with different names. Uh, so it looks like that that's going to be really the contributing factor to delays. Um, I, I, I've talked to a couple of Kia people. You guys have seen my interview, and I'm going to interview some Kia folks um, next week at the Toronto uh, Canadian International Auto Show. And I'll probably get the same answers for them. I think they really want to get these cars out. They're committed to electrification, uh, but it's just taking some time as they share the load. Because they're also putting the same pack in the Soul EV, and I haven't seen any... Um, delivery time frames yet on that vehicle so I, I would suspect that it's going to have some delivery issues for the next little while as well that's again great bang for the buck when you look at the the soul I haven't seen pricing but I'm suspecting it should be lower than actually even the Nero probably more in line with the Kona or maybe even slightly lower than the Kona so whole point of this is I know Kia's trying and probably a lot of people out there you're gonna send me comments and you're gonna bash them and ah blah 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 remember it took Tesla a long time to get the Model 3 out. They announced it March 31st, 2016. First orders went out September, what was that? That delivery date was, I think, July or August 
uh, of uh, 2017. So it was a year and a half later before the first vehicle was shipped. Never mind, just a little bit's going out. So give Kia some credit that's only coming from one plant. So it's similar to Tesla where everything's constrained and it seems like they just don't have enough of their supply chain worked out from a battery perspective as the market's heating up. And that's a, a concern for continued growth in the EV marketplace. The challenge will be the battery supplier market. Now that all these car manufacturers are going out and electrifying their fleets, they need to get batteries and cells and packs from people. And those and there's only so many manufacturers making this stuff. And uh, some people have even said there's, uh, in some cases, mineral and uh, uh, ore shortages, cobalt, or even though we're trying to move away from that, but other potential sometimes shortages that go on and off that can affect and impact battery electric vehicle delivery. So give Kia a break. They are trying. They are working hard. I generally think they are sincere. This is not, as I said on the last show, a compliance car. If you got to order it, I know in Canada as well, I received some information from a Canadian pre-reservation holder for the um, Nero EV. and He told me the same thing, that he was hoping to get it uh, this month, but now they're telling him it's going to be the latter part of this year for Canadian deliveries. So if anybody else hears anything different, please let me know. I'd love to hear from that. So getting back to VW, who I just almost can't go through a show without talking about because news keeps popping up and I think it's relevant. So I want to talk about it. Well, you know, as I mentioned on the last few shows, and I'll continue to say this VW is very serious about getting into the game. And, you know, I, I read a lot of comments and there's still a lot of people that are bashing them over Dieselgate. Hey, you know, remember, Dieselgate was, a by comparison to the size of the organization, it was a very few people who were involved in that. So give them a break. They are trying to clean their act, and I mean that figuratively, by increased EV adoption. I think they've seen the, uh, the, the errors of their ways and are doing things to remedy that. So you've got to give them a chance, folks. If you don't like VW, then don't buy them. Uh, some testing that VW is doing in Europe uh, and there's uh, some spy shots that are coming out and, and loves being seeing spy shots because this means that things are happening and that you know production for EVs uh, for the particular model is getting closer to reality so here's uh, some pictures of a not really identified vehicle yet from Volkswagen but it is based on the Golf sports van uh, platform, I guess. This was an all-electric test prototype that was spotted recently in Europe. No other specs happening, but, uh, you know, a nice-looking vehicle, as you can see by the pictures that I'm putting up here. There's also another um, test mule that was uh, spied the other day. Uh, this one over here, and it's uh, part of the ID Cross family, uh, and it looks like it's using Tiguan uh, as a donor or as some parts and supplies for it. Um, it, it, again, everything is based on the MEB platform, but it's not uncommon for manufacturers to pull parts and pieces from other vehicles to, to use for economies of scale and to save costs, obviously, for vehicles. So, uh, this one looks like it's an all electric prototype based on that Tiguan, uh, concept, uh, on the Tiguan vehicle today, as I mentioned, it should be a, this looks, appears to be a test mule for the ID Cross, which is the SUV, the smaller SUV-ish, um, vehicle that they're coming out with first and from a time frame not bad you know again i think that that car that we're looking at behind us looks really good it's a normal looking compact suv ish type vehicle with some uh you know seats five and got a bit of boot room to throw some stuff around and got a little higher stance if they come out with something like that i think it'll be really attractive now this just could be that they've taken some of these cars and they're putting the electronics, the mechanics and stuff in these to test them out before they, they look at the, the new skins. Good to see that happening from VW. And they did confirm as well um, more of their pricing point for the future, that they really want to kind of come back with the people's car, so to speak. Um, and they are predicting that by 2023 to 2024, they will have an electric car that will cost less than $22,900 U.S., that's right, $22,900 US or around 20,000 euro uh, for a, a uh, entry-level 
electric vehicle, I believe that will seat five, will be a five seater. Um, it looks like it'll be based on or around the size of, the, of a T-Rock, which is described basically as a small compact crossover utility vehicle, kind of like the Kona. If you look at the pictures behind me, it looks very similar to that Kona from a stance and a size perspective. Um, it's going to be, as I mentioned, uh, sometime between 2023 or 2024 availability. Five seats. It'll have a raised rise plat or ride platform, maybe a little higher height. Based on that, of course, all-purpose MEB platform that Volkswagen's coming out with. The range will be well over what the current Golf is, e-Golf, and I just talked about ranges on the last little bit there. Front-wheel drive. These are going to be produced at the Emden, Germany plant up to 300,000 a year. So they're already throwing out some production numbers. And as you heard from the Kia guy that I spoke to in Detroit, he said, uh, Kia, we don't give out production numbers. So it's interesting that Volkswagen is. Not all manufacturers do. And there's also suspect that uh, these vehicles will be uh, entrenched into some of the other uh, VW Group uh, product lines or model lines, including might get you might see a version of this into the Audi family. You might see a version of this into the Seat family oh, and to the Skoda family as well. So hence, uh, they can really build up and get some economies of scale. Wait and see if anybody has any information to share or they find anything else. Uh, any more information on, on these vehicles coming from VW? I'm excited. They're going to be announcing... Uh, I believe the Buzz uh, Cross at the Toronto show uh, in a few days, which I'll be down there for. So I'm looking excited to see that. I'll get some video and talk to people. Uh, all good, though. I'm super excited about VW and the momentum that is that we see from them that seems to be picking up. Last time I talked about the E-Mini or the Mini E was quite a while ago when, uh, in fact, I interviewed the, uh, the lady last year at the Toronto Car Show, Canadian International Car Show in Toronto. Well, looks like some more spy shots. Uh, she mentioned they'd be about a year or so away uh, from uh, actually rolling off assembly line. So it seems to be that uh, Mini is right on track with that. Uh, these uh, spy shots that you see behind me that are in testing again. Well, that looks like this test wheel was spotted. Uh, looks like some small changes is not uh, still looking very much similar to what the uh, what they came out from a concept perspective. Maybe the headlights or rear lights might be um, a little more conventional from what they had. It's going to be a three door hatchback at this point in time. Now, we don't have any a lot of specs on this car. Uh, the expected name for this is going to be the Cooper SE. Uh, should be unveiling it sometime this year. I'm guessing around maybe the mid time, midpoint of 2019, uh, because I know that they talked about the latter part of this year when they want to get out uh, these cars out the door. And production is happening in Oxford, South England. And, and they anticipate by the end of the year, they'll, these things will be rolling off the assembly line. It's based uh, on the Mini three-door hatchback and what Mini calls their UKL1 platform. And it's adapted to accommodate batteries and electric drivetrain. Range is expected to be about 200 miles, 320 kilometers. The electric motor will probably be about 135 kilowatts because they expect it to come from the same motor that the BMW i3s uses uh, for that. So hopefully these pictures gave you some nice sense of what's coming out. And uh, I think it's going to do well. I have no an idea on production numbers. And if anybody can find that out for me, send drop me a note or throw it in the comments. I'd love to hear. But keep your eye on the Mini. That's coming out uh, later this year. So BMW continues to push the electrification as they said they would. It's just taking them a little longer. So there's a proto another prototype tested in this this article references Sweden, so I guess all these cars, these mules and stuff are out in Sweden for winter testing. Uh, but it's the BMW iNext prototype. So this is their concept, and it's called the iNext. And, it, and it's, of course, uh, after, besides the iX3 and the i4 that are coming up, and I just talked about the i4, I believe, on the last show. This is um, basically another vehicle that BMW is coming out. It kind of completes the full initial, initial new push that BMW wants to do for electrification. Uh, that's about all the specs. There's nothing else other than, it, you know, it looks like a mid-size SUV-ish type vehicle. So uh, um, no surprise, that's where the money is, right? The money is in the margin, as we say. Yeah, excellent. So anybody gets any more information on this iNext prototype, let me know. Maybe I'll see stuff at the car shows uh, throughout the next season. Uh, but yeah, nice to see more stuff coming from BMW as well. 
not wanting to be left behind on all this movement in electrification is MG. We haven't heard much from them. Well, they have announced that they're going to be launching an electrified vehicle uh, called the ZS or ZS EV. Uh, it's going to be introduced in September of this year because MG is part of Chinese SAIC. So that's where the origins of this comes from. Uh, there's no dates about shipping yet. Uh, so I'm guessing at this point, that's probably a 2020 vehicle. Um, it, they've talked about that the range for this vehicle should be up to about uh, 220 miles or 350 kilometers of real world EPA range. Uh, but that's a guess. There's really not a lot of facts. MG, you know, doesn't do a lot. They, they only sold about 7,000 cars in, in the entire United Kingdom in 2018. So they're not, they're not pumping out a lot of cars, but what, you know, their owners are very happy with their cars and they buy them for certain reasons. So this looks like it could be very competitive in that uh, small CUV entry level SUV space where people seem to be getting in. And my hat's off to MG. I hope they can pull this off successfully and find their little niche and uh, add to the electrification portfolio. Finally, my last car manufacturer for today's show is Ford. We've been talking about pickup trucks for quite a while now. That's been the, the, the buzz since Rivian. Well, Ford has been doing some development, it seems, because there's this spy shot that just came out uh, that you see here behind me. And it's really, it's a test bed F-150 pickup truck that's uh, being charged there, uh, the electrified version of it. Now, I don't expect the actual electrified truck to look exactly like that. I mean, if you look at the picture, it looks the charging port is in the front bumper. I don't think it's going to be there in the reality, but who knows? Um, I, I think the goodness that I've taken away from this announcement is that um, Ford is doing something. What about with electric vehicles? Tesla clearly has shown there's demand in the market. General Motors is investing heavily there. When people look at Ford in electric vehicles, there are a lot of people who say, I'm not seeing enough. When do we see more? Well, we, we've talked about a huge investment in electric uh, vehicles. We have 16 models that are in uh, design and development. I have a pretty big surprise coming next year. Um, and we've actually inferred something more important. We said those early generations of uh, EVs were like science projects and they attacked a narrow segment of the market that had a good head about society and the performance environmentally. These are products that are gonna appeal to car owners and car lovers and they meet both of those other objectives. So Jim Hackett saying there is a big surprise coming next year when it comes to electric vehicles. Guys, I think most people believe that Ford will finally announce an all-electric vehicle, maybe uh, a, a, a mid-sized type sedan or small SUV. Do they do something with the F-Series in terms of electrifying it more than what they have right now? But they are going to electrify. They confirm they're going to electrify the F-Series, both from a high battery electric and a hybrid perspective. Really hope they, they do more battery electrics. So my guess at this point is we may see an electrified F-150 come out as early as the latter part of next year. But we'll have to wait and see. I do hope it's as soon as they, they're able to bring it out. Even if it's limited qualities, it'll be good because it will sell very well. Ford has a, a very highly recognized brand in that uh, truck and utility marketplace. If they can push some of these out, they will definitely sell. So keep watching more announcements and more news on Ford when it comes to the F-150s. The pickup truck battle, it's only getting started, folks. And that's it for episode 30 of the EV Revolution show. I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick look at a bunch of uh, news from different auto manufacturers. I've got all my contact information and thank you and, and good stuff coming up after this little bit. Again, want to say thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm super stoked about going in about five days to uh, downtown Toronto to for press day for the Canadian International Auto Show. Hopefully to get some vid out of that. Hope you continue to enjoy my show. Um, if you have not talked about to anybody about my show, I would encourage you to do that. If you like what you see, talk to people about it. Ask them to view it. If they like it, ask them to subscribe. To subscribe. Start spreading the word if you can for me, folks. I really appreciate it. So until the next show, which should have more car show content, everybody stay safe and stay warm in this uh, continued polar vortex. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.